Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! I will today let you decide that, whether we talk about religious education, which is one of my favourite conversations. Um, I'd got an A-level in it. I'm actually qualified for once to have this conversation, but it seems to me to be a little bit theoretical and philosophical, whereas if your kids are being asked to bring their own toilet paper to school, uh, that seems to me a, possibly a rather more urgent conversation. And speaking of urgent conversations, Jeremy Corbyn today, or John Healy today, actually, um, an impressive member of the Shadow Cabinet, is unveiling the Labour Party's housing plan. The idea is that, uh, uh, that they will build a million houses. So I'll give you some more of the detail uh, in, the course, in the course of the next hour. But the point is, well, there's two things that occurred to me this morning. The first was, I, I wonder whether Boris Johnson has done this on purpose. I wonder whether this intervention, slightly rude intervention, but I, I, I don't know that you, anyone judges Boris Johnson by normal standards for, for normal politicians. Very, you, you would say, uh, someone who reads a lot, I, I, his, his, his language is quite beautiful. His choice of words is, is absolutely perfect. And, and he knows exactly what he's doing. You know, the inver inverted pyramid of piffle that he talked about um, a few years ago. It just th these phrases stick in the mind. There's a poetry to them. Whatever you think of the man or his politics, on a purely literary level, he is he's, he's quite brilliant. Um, but I wonder whether this was deliberate. I wonder whether this was a, a deliberate attempt to distract attention away from Jeremy Corbyn's housing plans, which are due to be unveiled today. If so, you, you sort of find yourself wondering what they're worried about. Now, the polling is astonishing in its support for the Conservatives. Narrowed a little bit today. You can't read too much into polls, but yeah, they're the only guide we have of what the country may do. The Times poll today, by the way, in case you missed it. I, I can't think of many people who would give you this information. Times poll, for the first time, has the people regretting Brexit overtaking the people who are still pleased with it. But I, I think we've concerned ourselves with that issue enough in recent days. We won't, we won't go down that road today. We will instead go down the road of housing. And I want you to tell me, Let's start with a simple question, because there'll be a significant number of people listening to this programme who understand the property world much better than I do. Um, and I want them to ring me first. The simple enough question to answer then becomes, why don't they build more houses? Labour councils, it is revealed this morning, build more than Conservative councils in, in general. Labour-run councils have built on average 900 more new homes between 2010 and 2016 than their Conservative counterparts. That's a statistic that's come from the House of Commons Library, so I don't think it's um, susceptible to accusations of spin. Labour-led councils averaged 2,577 new homes each, 1,679 for Conservative-run authorities, and in last place, 1,660 for the Liberal Democrats. They will pledge to build 500,000 new homes, um, with half of them for council rent. So that's a, a simple enough equation, a quarter of a million new council homes. Labour doesn't just build more, John Healy uh, says. He, we build better too. Labour councils across the country are pulling out all the stops to help people with the day-to-day -day housing pressures they face. Now. As you know, uh, I, I'm a sworn enemy of letting people use immigration as a get-off or a get-out for politicians. Unfortunately, I'm increasingly uh, appear to be in a minority of one because this is this is the mistake that we've made as a country by allowing immigration to become the single biggest issue on most people's plates. Uh, NHS, blame it all on immigration. Schools, blame it all on immigration. Housing, blame it all on immigration. Traffic jams, blame it all on immigration. Uh, the weather, blame it all on immigration. Floods, I don't blame that on gay marriage. But generally speaking, once you allow the immigration genie to dominate political conversation for reasons that are probably more to do with emotion than intellect, it becomes it becomes almost like an eclipse of rational conversation. So I, I will talk today about people. 
And you, you may uh, want to insist that the reason why the relationship between people and property is skewed is because of immigration. And uh, let's just take that as a given. Let's pretend that that's out there and established because I'm more interested in talking about people. I don't want to distinguish one person from another based on something over which they have no control. 600,000 empty homes, we learned last week, 200,000 in England, but the national figure many people told me who rang in was 600,000 for empty homes. We know that an awful lot of empty properties are being held by foreign funds and foreign investors. I'll never forget the, the caller who told us that he was taking a minibus full of Chinese, middle-class Chinese people, not like massive property investors, around Cricklewood, I think it was. It's somewhere not immediately glamorous, let us say. Um, uh, looking at new builds. They were buying off plan and they weren't even bothering to move tenants in. I know this is a bit of a stuck record, but I think it's an important one. They weren't even bothering to move tenants into these properties because the return they were getting of, you know, up, uh, around the 10% a year mark at the time was much, much higher than they'd get even on, on, on the FTSE 100 or investing in gold bullion. The British property market, particularly in London, although it's spreading, had become so bonkers it's the only word I can think of, I grant you, it's not a very technical term, but it had become so bonkers that foreign investors with a few hundred grand to spare would be better off sticking it into a property in London and not bothering to rent it out, just sitting back and watching its value go up, than they would investing it in almost anything else. That's crazy. That, that to me, is the big answer to the housing problem. Just don't let people do that. You, you have some sort of penalty in place. But as we've discovered in the past, that would involve going after... Uh, the Duchy of Cornwall, the Duke of Westminster and Her Majesty the Queen, which I don't think is going to happen under the current or any soon-to-be established government. So you're left with this question of why they don't build more. That's the first question I want you to answer. It would be so popular, wouldn't it? For any... I mean, Tony Blair could have done it. We haven't... We haven't... I think the government in recent history that built the most houses was Harold Wilson's. Since Harold Wilson's premiership, Successive governments, both Conservative and Labour, have failed to build as many houses as Harold Wilson did during his premiership. The population in each of those years has been going up. So it's, from the outside looking in, to my amateurish eyes, it's incomprehensible that as, as the population has grown since the 1960s, the government-led house-building projects, or, or not even government, this is the total number of houses that get built in the country, it's been fewer than were built during Harold Wilson's premiership. I don't understand that. I genuinely don't understand that. How can that be? How can we be living in a country where every year the population goes up, but the number of houses being built has been going down every year pretty much since the 60s? I like this conversation because we can park party politics, can't we? It, happened, it didn't happen under Labour, it didn't happen under the Conservatives. It didn't happen under either. We didn't build enough houses. We are not building enough houses. So I want to hear from experts. We still like experts on this programme, but um, not self-appointed ones, as it were. I want, I want you to give me a call if you live in this world, if you work in the property area. And I'm not going to have a go at you if, you if you're going to explain that the reason why properties don't get built, the reason why we don't build more houses, James, is so that people like me can be richer. That's fine. I want detail. I want knowledge. I don't want moral judgment today. 0345 606973. 12 minutes after 10 is the time. And I, I, I kind of feel we should talk about the Labour housing proposals as well, which underpins my first question to you, which is why don't we build more? Half a million new homes, half for council rent. I, I, I'm tempted to ask you what's not to like about that. The quick comeback will be, how are we going to pay for them? But if it's property, that's not a problem, because people will buy them and people will rent them. So you may need to indulge in a little bit of public spending initially, but after that, you will have the properties paid for by the people living in them. I mean, even I can work that one out. So I don't think this is, can be evidence of Labour putting all their faith in a money tree or a sort of magic jackpot or anything like that. If I build a house and you live in it, then you either pay me to buy the house or you pay me rent to live in it. Yeah? Simples. Which leads me to my final question. And this is one where I'm a little bit embarrassed or, or, or a little bit conscious that if it really is as simple as it seems to me to be, then... My question is going to be, why the hell don't they do this? It, it probably isn't quite as simple as it appears to be to me. And that is this. The 
private sector landlords to whom public sector money is paid. Do you know you see, all this stuff that should be going around the world on a daily basis instead of these ludicrous, meaningless slogans that we've allowed to become the punctuation marks of our national conversation about borders and immigrants and what have you? Um, you remember Benefit Street on the telly box? White D, all of that, that street in Birmingham? You know the Sunday Mirror did a story about that when they wanted to find out where all the money was going. And the biggest landlord, the biggest beneficiary of Benefit Street in Birmingham was a Conservative Party donor, was, was, was a property owner, a multiple landlord. So all of that money that was coming out of our pockets, and you know I don't normally like the old taxpayers' money, but it was coming out of our pockets and going into the pockets of landlords, not, not the people living there. They don't get the money. The money goes through them to the landlords. And the biggest beneficiary of Benefit Street was a Conservative Party donor, a big-time Conservative Party donor. I'll know his name by the time we come back from the travel news. That seems to me to be a huge part of the problem. The proportion of former council homes that went into private ownership after Margaret Thatcher introduced that scheme and Tony Blair continued it, the proportion of those council homes that are now in the hands of private landlords, I think, is, is upwards of a third. So much public money is going into private pockets as a result of the property system. Now, I, I, I can't quite get my head around that. It's absolutely insane because it means that the, the properties aren't owned. So why don't councils, this is my question to you, and I'm possibly pulling down my own pants here and highlighting my ignorance. Why don't councils borrow big chunks of change and buy properties instead of and, and the mortgage payments would be similar to the rent so the public money currently being paid i think this is a stroke of genius all right but i appreciate that the fact that it seems so simple means it's probably a little bit naive so let's take a figure of a thousand pounds a month yes which a council is currently paying to a private landlord and the private landlord owns the home so he just puts it in the bank. He's getting £1,000 a month. He's getting £1,000 richer every single month, and the council is getting £1,000 poorer for that one property. Why don't they get a mortgage? On, on, why don't they buy it up? Buy up as, a, a, everything they can and pay £1,000 a month to service the loan. At the end of the 25-year period, they will then own the property. And they won't have paid out over that 25 years any more money in mortgage payments than they would have done in rental payments to a private landlord. I, I, I hesitate to say that, well, no, I will say it. And that seems to me to be the solution to pretty much every aspect of the housing problem. And I don't understand why it doesn't happen. You do. So call me on 03456060973. A lot of houses being built um, across the country. And... A lot of objections, of course, to houses being built across the country. But still, regardless of what's going on at the bottom of your street, fewer houses being built under this Prime Minister and the last Prime Minister and the Prime Minister before that and the Prime Minister before that, John Major, and the Prime Minister before that, Margaret Thatcher, and the Prime Minister before that, Jim Callaghan, and the Prime Minister before that, Ted Heath, than there were under the Prime Minister before that, Harold Wilson. 10.17 is the time. Let's talk after this. The question I asked you uh, uh, possibly already has an answer. So why don't governments just move property currently in the hands of private landlords into, why don't they buy them instead of renting them? Um, maybe this line answers it. Rich Tory landlords are among those raking in millions of pounds in housing benefits. It's despite the government clampdown on welfare payments, the housing benefit bill continues to rise. Property, any angle you want. Sharon's in Mary LeBone. Sharon, what would you like to say? Hi there. Um, Hello, I actually rent out to a lot of um, social housing tenants and uh, one of the attractions was not only to help people but also because I was being paid directly by the government. Yes. And then they stopped that and now it's up for the tenant to pay me and th they, d they don't always do that. No. So then I have to evict them which can take up to six months and then I think, okay, I've got an empty property. Would I prefer to give it to another social housing tenant? No. Or would I prefer to give it to a student who may or may not be from abroad or a professional who yes. may or may not be from abroad? Obviously, I, I have to stay afloat. I've got a mortgage on this property, so I will give it to... And you, and, you, and you need a poor person to pay it, Sharon. 
Why do I need a poor person to pay it? If, 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 if you've got a mortgage on it, someone's got to pay it. It can't be you. What do you mean it can't be me? You need a tenant in the house, otherwise you can't pay yeah. the mortgage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I will choose a professional or a student. So when, when I... Oh, and that, that's a shame, because my entire portfolio was 100% social housing, and then as I started to vacate non-paying social housing tenants, I, I had to replace them with professionals and students instead. It, 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 I, I understand what you're saying, and it, it is... Uh, it's not really uh, answering any of the questions that I've asked, is it? But it, it, it perhaps explains some elements of the crisis, and, and it would then be... I mean, the thinking behind the government idea, and I forget which one it was actually, uh, was that it would teach these tenants a little bit more responsi financial responsibility if the money passed through their hands on well, its it way. Work. No, well, it clearly doesn't work for an awful lot of people. And, and, and I think your question, your, the question you were asking is why we have to stop this influx of foreign money and we have to stop giving them housing. We should. Oh no, that's a very that, that's a very small part of it. I don't I don't want to offend you, but but the central thrust of my argument is that what you do should be criminalised. What I do should be criminalised. Yes, I, I think there should be a, a limit on the number of properties that you can expect um, uh, taxpayers to buy for you. Why is a taxpayer buying my property? Because I'm the house, money. because the housing benefit that your social, okay. the housing benefit that your social housing tenants receive that you've complained didn't go directly to you anymore comes out of taxpayers' pockets, and the mortgages you've told us you need to pay are yeah. paid by. So I mean, it, the taxpayers are buying you properties. It's not, it's not a personal uh, criticism of you. Yeah. It's the system that I, I, I mean, maybe people would be so daft not to fill, not to fill their boots. But if if the council that pays the housing benefit was actually paying the mortgage, if they were the mortgage holder instead of you, then at the end. Yeah of that mortgage period, the country, the council, the people would own the home and any rent paid to live in it would, would be profit, as you well know, because this is your your yeah, personal I, fortune I, I that's growing every month. I don't mind that. No. I actually don't mind that at all. And well, I, you wouldn't vote for it, the though. Councils, I, actually, I wouldn't mind because the councils were selling off blocks and blocks of, of council estates to private landlords like me. Yes, they're doing it the wrong they, way around. They didn't, they didn't manage it well themselves, so they don't have enough business education to make to make it all work clearly, which is why they outsource it to the private sector, which is me. So. Or, or, or it, it makes the balance sheet look a lot nicer, which translates into government debt, which um, becomes an electoral issue. Why, why do you think governments historically haven't built more houses? The lowest level now since the 1920s. Do you know, I don't have an answer for you, I'm sorry. In theory. I don't know. It could be the same as your last answer, couldn't it? It could be the, the, the lack of business acumen or the lack of business now in the public sector. Maybe. Maybe their answer to everything is just increased stamp duty. That's another factor. I built homes for first-time buyers, and I didn't manage to sell all of them because first-time buyers were struggling, one, to get a mortgage, two, to get a deposit, and three, the stamp duty was too too, too high for them to manage. I mean, that's just the tax. And, 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 but you keep the prices high by limiting supply, don't you? So all of these sites that have been bought for future development and then aren't built on, it used to confuse me, but of course these people are playing a much longer game than politicians are. They're looking at what the profit on that plot might be in 20 years time, not at what it could be tomorrow. So that's why they don't build on it. Well, I just know that there's a huge shortage yeah. and I'm happy to help solve that shortage and I would like to be assisted by the, if the government isn't going to build them themselves and I'd like to do it myself but I'd like support from the government to do so. Yes, I, I, I understand. I mean, I, I think you're part of the problem, not the solution, but that might just be my personal perspective, and I certainly don't mean to, 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 to criticise you personally. I, I rue the day, frankly, that my personal politics took me out of the uh, took me out of the buy-to-let market. I kind of rue it. I mean, I know I did the right thing, but I'm considerably poorer than you as a result. 27 minutes after 10. Ken is in Norbury. Ken, what would you like to say? James, your jaded view is Ken from. You remember we talked about sacks before. Carol Decker came on and said something about it. So, Come, mate, you've got ninety yes, seconds. You can, you can, you can use it in whatever briefly, way you want, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, briefly, your view is very jaded. I, you know, I'm also a landlord, and uh, I'm also an estate agent. Horror. So I'm already hated by everybody. But here we are. Uh, yeah, you've got sixty is, seconds now, Ken. I, mean, I, I don't know how much help I can give you in, in telling you to hurry up, but there we go. The situ maybe by not talking. The situation is that the government have created this problem by not building enough homes. You're absolutely right. Don't persecute those that are actually trying to fill the gap. 
Thanks, Ken. It's coming up to 28 minutes after 10. I'm very keen to hear from you on this programme. If you can answer the question of why the government doesn't build more houses, um, I, I would uh, suggest that you employ the time available rather more productively, perhaps, than old Kenneth just managed to there. The party will today release, this is the Labour Party, a report by John Healy highlighting what it says are innovative efforts by Labour-led councils on housing. I'm not sure they're going to get away with that, are they? The uh, perception I have sitting here, and you might be able to correct me, is very much that uh, the leadership of your council doesn't seem to have had a particularly big impact upon the building of houses. And when they point to differences in numbers, the differences are almost negligible. 20 Labour-led councils apparently involved in policies to build homes for first-time buyers and social rent to tackle homelessness and to build energy efficient housing. How is that going to work? Why don't they build more houses? And what about our plan? What about this idea that people like Sharon cannot be criticised for availing themselves of the opportunity to make pots of cash, in a sense at the taxpayer's expense, but if the taxpayer's money was being used to service mortgages rather than to pay rents that go to private landlords who are servicing mortgages, a huge swathe of these problems would be wiped out almost overnight. Almost overnight. Just, 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 just answer that question for me. She's given us part of an answer. The idea that the um, business acumen, if you will, that's needed to do this is lacking from councils. I wouldn't necessarily uh, stick with the policy of letting the money move directly from the council in housing benefit to the tenant and from the tenant to the landlord. I think she's right to suggest that it, it, it makes more sense to go direct from the council, direct from the, from the housing benefit to, to the landlord. That way you don't have to do evictions, you don't have all these other problems. But what, what, what is it within my proposal that explains why it hasn't been done? 0345 6060 973. Because otherwise we're going to have to... Uh, Oh, we're all going to have to agree that I'm a genius. It's half past ten. I'd like you to choose the conversation we have in the next hour. It's going to be about schools. It can either be, and do you know, actually, it's going to be self-selecting this. How widespread is the phenomenon of, of, of cuts affecting the way a school is run now? So we've got two examples of it. We've got a special needs school in Birmingham today that has revealed it's shortening its teaching day by half an hour because of cuts. I don't quite understand how that works because presumably the teachers are salaried rather than on an hourly rate, but that's the explanation they've given. The government rejects it. We heard last month about a father who was astonished to receive a letter from his child's school asking the kids to bring in their own toilet paper because cuts were affecting some supplies in that way. So um, it's cuts or the religious education story, which involves an increasing number of parents asking for their children to be withdrawn from a religious education classes because they really want their children to remain ignorant about particularly Islam. Um, the Church of England is very worried about this because they understand that the best way to stop people being frightened of something is to give them a proper understanding of it. I, I don't know which one you'd prefer. I think I lean towards cuts, but I, I think we'll have a rare outbreak of democracy today. I'm only going to take texts on this, otherwise it gets too com complicated. So text 84850 with two with either cuts or RE, okay? Cuts or RE. And if you've been affected by the cuts and you're going to be able to call in in the next hour, I doubly urge you to text in. Um, cuts or RE. Goes back to the 80s, apparently, uh, when Margaret Thatcher introduced a law banning the councils from doing what I'm suggesting would solve the housing crisis at a stroke. Um, but that adds to my conviction that the way to do it is to borrow, uh, to, to service a loan with the housing benefit payments that come out every month instead of paying the rent to a private landlord. I mean, seriously, what's not to like about this proposal? Why isn't Jeremy Corbyn announcing that today? And of the half a million new homes he's going to build, where's he going to put them? John's in St Albans to answer, or at least to perhaps throw a spanner in the works of the last question. What would you like to say, John? Exactly that, James. <laughs> Where are we going to put them? Encroachment onto green space. Um, I, yeah, uh, you, you know what my comeback is now, don't you? Go on. Golf courses. Privately owned. Well, no, but, but just in terms of green space and, and, and well, property, there's a big chunk of land in. No, in, but more, in more of the country more down of down. the country is covered in golf courses than homes at the moment in, in Britain, in the United uh, Kingdom. I could, I, could, I could be really boring and start talking about common land and the Magna Carta and stuff, which it really, really does involve. It does. And the, when we had the big housing um, building after the war, Local authorities 
borrowed money from the banks on 100-year mortgages, knowing that they would be recouping the money which they had borrowed because they were never going to be sold off. Well, as we know, history has now changed that, and, and a lot of the properties was, were sold off. The condensing housing project, if you like, tower blocks in yes. the cities, um, that experiment has largely failed because a lot of these were knocked up on the cheap after people from the Wilson government went to Germany in the 60s to see how Germany had rebuilt itself after the war. Yes. And we hadn't. People were still living in prefabs. And a lot of these bigger states like uh, the Highgate by the Elephant and Castle, Hume in Manchester, Chelmsley Wood up there in Brum, are now unfit for human habitation and they've got to be pulled down. So... Where do we go from here? Why, why, why um, are you such an expert? Um, <laughs> What's your... I, 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 the, um, Caroline, was it, asked me this. Did she? It's, it, yeah, it, Great it, minds. It's, uh, well, it's something that the only party conference I've ever really watched studiously yeah. was the 1996 party conference when we knew we were going to be getting a Labour government. And John Prescott said, we will be embarking on the biggest house that this country has seen since the end of World War II. By the end of the millennia, we would have built one million new homes in three years. And they built probably not even 30,000 of that because of the problems that I've just outlined. The actual problems of it, you can't just build gaps, man. You've got to build infrastructure, which means more pollution. More, no, I, 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 I don't get off message or, or don't get off track because why do you think like, I mean, it's possible they were just lying, but I don't know that that is what you're... <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's what you're suggesting, is it? Or are you? What? The, when they promised to build loads of houses and then just didn't. What one imagines no, they no, must no, have... No, it was, it was, it was, it was, no, no, it, it wasn't just... It wasn't just lying. It's that he probably just didn't even look at it properly. Right, yes, to, OK. To, 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 to say, yeah, I mean, you know, like, we can go back to the golden unicorn at your front door. I mean, you know, they... they they can they can promise things to people, but they're not actually researching it properly and just hoping that the people are going to believe it. So the answer to the question, I, I appreciate there are difficulties involved in building houses, and I appreciate there may be a shortage of land, but but there is room to build more. There's a lack of appetite here. We know that big developers sit on plots for years because the value goes up. What would you do to, to sort of unblock that passage, if you pardon well, me? I, 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 um, are you aware of Professor Matt Paul Hutchinson, the renowned architect? He, he is erring to going back on the tower block experiment, but this time actually doing it properly. Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 like the, the um, housing... Especially in big cities, because a lot of big yeah, European yeah, like, like, cities, there's, I mean, it's apartments yeah, and flats in Paris. Uh, Very few yeah, people yeah, have a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this time actually doing it properly, building them properly, not knocking them up on the cheap like they did in the 60s, because yeah. poor people were still living in prefabs. They've been bombed out 20, 30 years previously by the Luftwaffe. And this, this 1980s law that Margaret Thatcher introduced, the banned councils, does your expertise stretch to explaining why she did that? Uh, well, banning councils because... From borrowing money to buy houses. Yeah, well, the, 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 a lot of the new developments that were, that were going up were then private houses. Barrett, Barrett Estates, yeah? The Barrett Helicopter Man. Mr. Frankie goes to Hollywood. But that was what people were going to do. Well, no, the, the, the man that did the Barrett Homes was the voice Barrett. over on the phone. Barrett, I thought you said Borough, sorry. Barrett no, Homes, Barrett, yes. Barrett, yeah, got you. Barrett yes. Barrett Homes, right? The, that was what yeah, everybody was going to do. There was more homeowners... So she stopped, she stopped councils doing it, you're suggesting, as a, as a, as a, to give developers and business people the, 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 the room to mop up the gap that was Absolutely. created. Yeah, well, I'll buy that from you, mate. I, seriously, I, I, you've got that lovely manner. I, I don't know why. There's a reason why I think Caroline and I both asked you why you know so much about it. You, you speak with enthusiasm about a subject that could otherwise be very dry. 10.41 is the time. John, take care. Um, I, I don't know where the time's gone, actually. Let's crack on with this. Kelly's in Woking. Kelly, what, what, what would you like to say? Yeah. 
the reason why the councils have got the problem is, is because they need the people to stay in the system. Without the system, that's they're paying £160 a day for a family to stay in bed and breakfast when they've got empty homes there. Yeah. Uh, and that's the business. If they didn't have, like, have a new housing estate built here, yeah. a big, massive, there's over a thousand homes. It is massive. Yeah. They moved in bad, troubled tenants to begin with whilst the development was going on. The development is nearly finished. Those bad tenants that were given brand new houses that have had CCJs, that have caused problems to neighbours, that have done all sorts of bad things, they moved them in, knowing that they were going to, one, destroy the houses, two, they would be in court within the year to be evicted. Now, those houses that were sent out for the 23%, the the 23% of social systems that those houses were put for, they are now and put back into the bed and breakfast system, into the homeless system, to, to pay premium rate because that's where the money is. It's not in renting out a house to a family. It's in putting them back into bed and breakfast. Yeah, but the councils back- don't get any of that money, Kelly. But it, it's, it's, still, it's still a business. It's still yeah, but the councils don't get any of that money. Out. You're suggesting the councils do it on purpose for reasons of profit, but none no, of the... No, not the council do it on purpose. It's the system. The system. The system relies on... I, 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 how many times you say the word system? Is, is, isn't going to make what you're saying easier for me to understand? No? Okay. So it's the system, is it, Kelly? I, I think so, yeah. No, I've I just think, been yeah. So I've gone through that system, and the system relies on people being honest. And in this day and age, not very many people are honest in the system. And because they're not honest, the system is at a fail. So unless you, like you suggest, give the person a loan, and then they have to pay back that loan, but the rent's still paid. Well, then you take the away their, you take away their honesty uh, under this system. You give the money directly from the uh, from from the council to. To, to the person, to, yeah, to, to the landlord. Do you um? You're not a fan of my five star. Nearly lost her house because of that. She's a single mum, five children. It's the she's system. on benefit cap. She's on a benefit cap, so she's. Do you do you remember? Benefit. Are you a fan of the much missed eighties family pop group Five Star, Kelly? <laughs> I can't remember them. So you I don't, don't remember know. that big hit, System Addict. Oh, okay. Because I think no, you're I a system it. addict, Kelly. Really? Yeah, well, you just said the word system about 27 times in the course of our oh, conversation. Sorry. No, I like it. I, 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 it's, it's a lot, not every day you get reminded of the British Jacksons, five star, as, I, as, as they were known. Kelly, take care. I, I, I mean, you, you, you're part, part of the answer to the question, but no one yet has come, come up with a reason why the, the scheme to actually pay mortgages rather than rents that private landlords like our first caller shall and pay mortgages with. Let the councils do it and it turns out Margaret Thatcher made that illegal for councils. First thing you do as the new Prime Minister is, is change that law back again. And then the council instead of paying somebody Rich's mortgage, guess how much money goes to every year the Duke of Westminster in housing benefit. Guess how much he gets in housing benefit every year. Bearing in mind that his properties are in some of the most salubrious parts of the country and therefore are less likely to contain tenants who've claimed housing benefit, he gets just shy of a quarter of a million quid a year in housing benefit. The Duke of West, the richest man in the country, gets quarter of a million pounds a year worth of housing benefit. I, I, I come down on him like a ton of bricks. A ton of bricks, you see what I did there. It's 10.45. Okay. I'm going to knit this together now. It could all end horribly. It could all end in tears. So, so don't, 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 don't be too mean to me if I come a cropper. In 1979, councils were allowed still to borrow money uh, in order to build houses, and then they could use the money being paid to live in that house, whether it was coming from uh, the the person living in it themselves, their wages, or whether it was coming from housing benefit, that money could then be used, in a sense, to service the loan that had been taken out to build the property. Margaret Thatcher got rid of that. She made it illegal for councils to borrow money to build, which partly perhaps explains why we've seen a decline ever since in the number of properties being built by councils. Okay? She also introduced right to buy, as you know, which was a very popular policy because even though it affected a relatively small number of people, it gave everybody else hope. The idea, a little like a lottery ticket, was that maybe I'll be able to buy my council house one day. And that, 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 dream of ownership, I think, was politically incredibly powerful. Fast forward to 2017, okay, councils are still not allowed to borrow money to build houses. Approximately a third of all properties built, uh, bought under the right to buy schemes, which continued under Labour, so this is not a Conservative 
offence. Just give you the, the roots of it. It continued under Labour and under Gordon Brown and Tony Blair. So about a third of the properties that were bought under right to buy, ex-council properties, are now in the hands of wealthy landlords. Okay. Councils still aren't allowed to, to borrow to buy, so they can never get those properties back as things stand. They could buy them back, even if it involves giving a profit to those private landlords, and then instead of paying housing benefit to those private landlords, they would be servicing the loans used to buy the properties. And then if I tell you, because I'm not one for conspiracy theories, even in these curious times, if I tell you about a fellow called Ian Gow, who was not only an aide to Margaret Thatcher, but also a Tory housing minister in her government, his son now owns at least 40 ex-council properties. So when John agreed with my cautious suggestion that perhaps the reason why Margaret Thatcher's government brought this plan in was so that the business being done by councils at the time with no profit for the private sector could instead be done by the private sector with huge profits then involved for business, that would explain why she brought in the ban on councils being able to do it. And then it goes further because the son of, of, of her own housing minister now owns at least 40 of these ex-council properties. Maybe it's a coincidence. Or maybe it was a sort of vague plan all along. So you talk about a housing crisis until you're blue in the face. You are never going to fix it until councils are allowed to provide social housing using money they have borrowed and loans they service with the money currently going into the pockets of private landlords. This is one of the biggest penny drop moments we've ever had on the programme, actually. And, and unfortunately for the Labour Party, this isn't the policy that they're announcing today. Uh, they are pledging to build half a million new homes. They are using statistics from the House of Commons Library to show that Labour-led councils are building more houses at the moment than Conservative-led councils. But the numbers aren't really sexy enough to land any punches. That, that, that simple uh, tapestry of information that we've just knitted together, that explains everything to me. It really does. I, and I should thank my um, furiously busy correspondent, incorrigible FCA, for, for sort of giving me the tools I needed to knit that together. It's, it's four or five separate things he sent me. The Duke of Westminster in receipt of housing benefit, the Ian Gow's son having 40 ex-council houses, a third of these properties now being in the hands of private landlords. That's it. There's the housing crisis right there, isn't it? Don't you think? It's, it's there. That's it. That explains it. It makes sense now. Councils used to be able to borrow money to build social housing. So council houses could be bought and built and paid for by the housing benefit money coming out of the Treasury. But that money now goes into the hands of private landlords. And we wonder why we've got a housing crisis. Next. Tin Hackney. Nick, I don't know why you've bothered ringing in. I've solved everything. Good morning, James. Hello, I Nick. I think you've covered most of the points. <laughs> Typically, the biggest problem is, which you haven't covered, is that the council will not pay people to pay off their own mortgages. So let's say somebody can afford a deposit but can't afford the mortgage, um, he's then not eligible for benefits because he actually owns a part of his own property. So he's forced to go into the renting system. So as a small private landlord, I commiserate with you all the way and I say the same thing. Yes, the benefit system is actually helping the landlord, not the tenants. Uh, and uh, and I'm not going to fall out with you because you, you acknowledge that and uh, it's, it's, it's the laws of, of, of logic that offer you the opportunity to profit from it. But you see it as a, as a system that's upside down. It's completely flawed because typically uh, the benefit system works on a sliding scale, but the scale is actually greater than the earnings. So there comes a point, a tipping point, if you know what I mean, that if you earn X amount, you're entitled to benefit. Yes. You then go over that amount, you then no longer become entitled. So there is a point at which it's not viable to work. Well, yes, I guess there is. I mean, we've heard that before. I don't know how widespread the problem is. But if you're on housing benefit and you, well, I, I, it's sliding scale. So you're on housing benefit and you're tempted to take a better paid job. You're suggesting that some people won't or they won't take a job at all because they'll lose so much of their benefits that won't be replaced by their wage, which is what universal credit was supposed to, um, to address, wasn't it? 
But there is uh, one exception, and that's shared ownership. Go on. And that's, again, an anom- anomaly in the system. So when you buy a shared ownership, let's say a, a, a typical flat which will cost you in London 500000 and you buy a third, yeah. um, so you, you, can, you can afford 150000 for example. Yes. You then purchase that third. The balance, which is 350 outstanding, you pay rent on as a typical social rent. But somehow, for some reason, you are still entitled to claim benefit on that balance of of uh, the part that you don't own. So there is a flaw in the system where with shared ownership properties, you can own a property and you can still claim benefit on the balance of the housing benefit. I, 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 I know that you're making sense and I know that a lot of people listening will have understood you, but I'm a bit dopey and you, you, you lost me a little bit halfway through that. But, but the, the simple observation from a private landlord, albeit one with a relatively small portfolio, is that the system is skewed in favour of him. And he's, you know, he, he will admit that. And, and there you go. It's kind of QED, isn't it? Rob's in Maidenhead. Rob, what made you pick up the phone? Hi, well, James. How are you? I'm all right, mate. What's on your mind? Uh, I think you've almost got the right idea, actually, um, you regarding sounds, how... You, you sound surprised, Robert. I was. <laughs> <laughs> go on, then. <laughs> <laughs> no, if, 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 just, just take it one step further. So, if, if you think about it, when you buy shares in the company, you, you, you own the share, but you don't own the company. Yes. So, surely the way to do it would, would be for the state, I mean, uh, uh, you know, at, at government level, to set up some kind of fund, which is the housing fund. Yes. Uh, so, all, all the people all the people with, with money washing around can stick money into that fund. So, you have a fund which is there to build houses. The, um, the, the, the government then pays a percentage out to the, the people who've invested in that fund. So it could be five or six or six, whatever the number is. I don't think they even um, need to do that because of the amount of money that they, they themselves dish out every year in housing benefit. You just use that money to service loans rather than to pay rent, rather than to, to service government loans or council loans rather than to service private mortgages for landlords. But no, no, but the beauty is, the beauty is you're, you're, you're using money which is washing around the system anyway. So, so instead of being um, hived away, they're going to start investing in the fund. The fund pays a percentage and the state still owns the property. So it's, but private investors are still making a profit out of public housing, which is something I'm, no, 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 I'm no, trying no. to avoid. No, they are. No, they're, 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 they're making a percentage, they're making a return in the same way as they would on the stock market. But the government and, and the, uh, still owns the housing and they still own the actual increased value of the housing. Yes, and, and, any, and, and any money being paid to live in that housing, once it has actually been paid for, goes, uh, it sort of becomes a win-win situation. Is the, the money either stays in the system, back to uh, Kelly, or it, 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 it is, um, it's profit. 10.58 is the time. Rob, thank you. Tristan's in Finland. Tristan, I've got about a minute and a half. What would you like to say? Um, I'd like to say that basically your summary was totally correct. What? Um, I'm, an, I, I'm an architect. Uh, I'm a foreign uh, landlord, own property in the UK, or okay. formerly did before uh, Brit, uh, Brexit votes. Um, uh, the, the basic thing is, is that councils aren't allowed to make a profit, basically. Yes, that's, so, the, that's the law that Thatcher brought in, I think. Yeah, and and it it went further than the sort of basic law that uh, councils weren't allowed to sort of borrow yes. to to build properties because basically it was meaning that the councils were making profit in the long run and Thatcher didn't approve of that. Thatcher didn't approve of of the state making profit. Basically, it should be private corporations that make profit and then pay tax to the state. Yes, and. Uh, until there can be a change in this sort of approach that the state should be allowed to make profit to pay for itself, um, uh, nothing in that uh, sort of housing industry is going to change. <laughs> We've done it, Tristan. Yeah. <laughs> We've done it. We've solved yeah, thank it. Thank you very much. No, well, thank you very much. That doesn't happen very often on the programme. We always like to think we're pushing towards moments of clarity and the dropping of pennies, but that, that, that would appear to me to be a policy that you could introduce. Who would stop you introducing it? Well, unfortunately, the richest and most powerful people in the country would be the first to suffer. So history suggests that they may come up with a way of perhaps stymieing any such proposals. Or, of course, they'll just blame it all on immigration.